Welcome to this tutorial where I show you how you can create such a beautiful wing menu which brings up another wing menu which lets you choose some things. We will need this for our beautiful and perfect Lego game tutorial where we have different modes like uh, placing the brick or playing uh, with the character and if we play the brick we can choose which brick we want to have for example a big brick and a yellow one and so we can place yellow bricks turn them around as we saw in the last tutorial and this gives us the opportunity to place different bricks of different styles in our game so let's do this as we slowly build up our game slowly this github repository is built up for example if you are at the sixth episode just go to the lego game click on commits click on the fifth or sixth episode and then you will have the exact thing we changed in this episode and if you go to browse files you will have the state of the repository at that thing and since we are in the eighth episode you click just on episode 8 and you can download um, the files by clicking browse files to create the wing menu uh, we extract all the other old stuff by creating a new folder in our scripts folder called ui and then we created the sharp script that is called uh, wing menu or maybe wing and the other thing we will create is another script called wing element so this is how the wing look like if you create it but we don't want, want a money behavior because we want to create a scriptable object so just create the scriptable object make sure that unity engine is included and then uh, we think about the wing and our wing has elements wing elements so we will create these in a minute but first we add this decorator and this is for the scriptable object so we will have a default file name called wing element or better we call it wing and we create a menu called wing menu and wing so let's uh, go to the wing element there we go um, this is our ring element and it's also a scriptable object let's add this decorator so uh, the file name default file name is wing element and we create this menu element so we have two things in our menu it's wing and wing element and it's all a scriptable object we will come to that in a minute but first let's create three attributes name icon and next wing the idea is very simple for example this is our wing and a wing contains of one or more ring elements so these are the wing elements and these wing elements have an icon so this is what shows shown in the wing it has a name this is for internal use and uh, the next wing yes of course it points to the next wing and there are the next wing elements simple as that so you can reuse it you can make it as deep as you want this is our data model speaking of data model we go to back to our project uh, select a folder doesn't matter which one say create wing menu this is new because it's a scriptable object and this is what we have done so the wing and the element these are the menu path we have defined and we create a wing so our default um, name is given here and if we choose wing element then there is a default uh, name for it too so we have a main wing and in this main wing we have a four by two element or brick and we will have a new brick so a new element two by two brick so and these um brick has a name zero y we will come to that in a minute and this is the name one and the main wing has two elements or even four elements so it has a two by two brick a four by two brick and then we repeat it just because the wing would be empty otherwise um maybe in the future we should add different bricks here and what I already prepared for you uh, is this image and this image. We will use these images um, so the wing is for the wing and the symbols are for the wing elements. So go back to the wing elements and we will choose this um, two by two and we will select sprite this two by two brick and uh, four by two brick. The same goes here. And then we will create another menu called uh, wing or coloring 
this is our color ring and these two have a next wing and they all will go to the color ring and therefore we create an element um, color red for example and we will choose an icon red we will give a name we will just give a number one two three four starting with zero and there is no next wing so our menu ends here Okay, I prepared something for you. Blue, green, red, one, two, three, or zero, one, two. And the coloring um, contains three elements and we will drag and drop it here. This is our data model. You could model a huge menu out of this. We will build a modular menu. You can stick to it, whatever you want. So let's go to the coding. Uh, we have a script for the wing and the wing element. Now let's add the logic. Okay, next C sharp script is ring menu mono behavior. And this is it. Uh, let's start by adding some properties. Um, so here are some things not defined. The action, let's define it. Ring paste key, uh, ring cake piece is something we have to define. So uh, let's add the script. And here we go again, the same thing. Let's add an uh, icon and an image. So um, make sure you're using the white thing here, Unity Engine UI. So what is it? We have a representation, a model, a wing, and an element. And we have the logic here, the controller. It's uh, the image of an icon, the image of a piece cake, or a cake piece. And uh, yeah, that's it for the logic here. <laughs> Simple as that. And here with the wing menu, and uh, we have to add logic here. We will come to these in a minute. Let's start building our wing menu by just calculating the step length. So uh, you can imagine if you have two elements or three elements, they should all uh, take one third or 360 divided by three degrees of this complete wing. So this is calculated here. And next up, we will add instantiate our uh, wing cake pieces and this is uh, data element length and here with the data. Data is the model wing where we stored our elements which we already created and the elements of the data is of course the wing elements. This is what we all set up in the scriptable object and we will go through these and of course uh, we will instantiate those. So we will take a wing cake piece prefab we will create it in a minute uh, set the current transform as a parent and um, yeah the local position and rotation should be zero so for the prefabs we create a new folder um, we will call the prefab and then we will create the game objects therefore we go to ui canvas and add the canvas yes perfect set the values exactly as mine Go to UI image to create an image. As the sprite, select the wing and make sure that you choose filled. And there you can see we can really fill this image. Make sure the fill origin is on top. So this looks a little bit better. Make sure that um, you scale it up a little bit. And yeah, that's, that's what we do. We will uh, choose this fill amount, um, for example, one third. And then we will uh, set this rotation to the right value so that we have one, two, three things of these. Okay, this is a cake piece. And of course, as a cake piece, you should uh, have the wing cake piece script. Let's create an empty and the canvas calls this uh, wing. And this is the other prefab, just drag and drop it to create a prefab and add as a ring menu mono behavior. As data, we can set our main wing. Wing uh, piece prefab, we can set this one. So gap width degree is a uh, uh, degree of the gaps. So as you saw maybe in the beginning, I have uh, three pieces, for example, this one, this one, this one, and here is a gap, here is a gap, and here is a gap. And this is defined by this value. Okay, we hide the path in the inspector because we do not need it. This is all what we will define. Okay, now we need a point where we create these things and we will create this in our controller. 
So our controller will be added by a menu logic. Um, the controller is quite heavy, pretty heavy right now, but um, we will definitely need those. So, and this is a time where we introduce uh, the modes with controller mode mode. So we need, really need some enumeration in which state we are, if we are in play, build or in the menu state. And let's uh, replace this coding here. And as soon as we do that, we get a null pointer exception. And the reason is uh, I did a stupid mistake and we can open our prefab. So there we go. Uh, we will add another image for the icon. Let's maybe set it here, call this icon. And then the icon can go to the icon slot. And uh, we will create UI image uh, the piece. And of course, the piece will have the wing. And we will just remove this one here. Just set the same value as always. And then we can drag the piece here. So this is easier to handle those two. Make sure that you scratch your image to the full uh, size. Hold Alt and Shift and then just click on this one and the icon or the piece uh, has its own value. This is all fine. And then you can access this uh, cake piece here, set the fill amount, transform location, rotation and the color. So make sure that your fill origin is top again and uh, the fill amount is somewhere around here. And then in play mode you see this result. It looks good, uh, the icon is not set correctly, we will fix it. So with two lines of code, the icon sprite will be set to data elements icon. And the transform local position is as a local position of the cake piece plus then the angle axis of the step lengths. Um, the step lengths times the element um, rotated by the forward vector. So basically this is uh, pointing in your direction or away from the screen. This is a screen and you rotate this icon around uh, this point here, pivot point. And then uh, the icon distance is applied as a distance from this origin to the icon. Okay, how to measure that, how to get that value? Easy, we will just calculate it from the beginning. So it's a distance from the icon position to the cake piece position at the start. Since we get that out of the way, this is our menu. It looks quite fine, the icons are there and um, I can't really click on this, but we will add this now. Okay, we will do this all on update and the first thing we always do is calculate the step length. We will need this on every update. And then we will need a special function. So this function takes a number a and adds 360 de degree to it and then um, takes a modulo out of it. Uh, what's it good for? For example, if you have zero, the output is zero, 180, the output is uh, 180. Uh, 360, the output is 360. But if you have more than 360, for example, 460, then it's 100. So it always repeats after these steps and even if we go back and say minus 180 degrees will be reverted to 180, de uh, 180 degrees minus 90 are 270 so we are always looping through the 300 and because we need the mouse angle and therefore we normalize a complete angle um, it's a complete function so uh, what matters is what's inside here so we have a signed angle um, from the up vector, this is this vector, to the mouse position. So, for example, the mouse is here. Then we have uh, this vector, this is this one. And uh, then we all um, have the angle around the center, the vector forward. And so we got an angle here. This is maybe 45 degrees. If the mouse is here, it's 90 degrees. So let's debug log the mouse angle. If you have your prefab, make sure to have these values so that your pivot point is really in the middle to make it work. And here you see uh, in the debug log, uh, here there is um, the angle is always going with my mouse. So now it's increasing and anti-clockwise it's decreasing. And here around here with the zero, a little bit strange, um, but it's okay. 
While preparing the session, this was not a problem for me, but you could also use uh, the half of the screen width and height. If we have the angle, it's easy to calculate the active uh, element because it's just the mouse angle divided by the step length and then wound it to the floor. So we just use an in-cast. To really see what's going on, we um, change the color depending on if the element is active or not. Therefore, we iterate through all the elements and if the eye is active element, we take a dark color. If it's inactive element, we take a light color. And this is all done by changing the alpha channel. Last but not least, we need the button interaction. If we press the button, we want to do the following. So, um, let's reduce it and go down uh, step by step. So, we want to destroy the current active game object, which is a current wing, because we either want to close the wing or span a new wing. And therefore, we state this uh, if thing here, where it says, okay, data element, active element has a next wing or not. Uh, if it doesn't have a next wing, we close everything. If it has a next wing, we will spawn the next wing. Um, so if it has a next wing, we instantiate the wing, which is we use this wing menu as a prefab. So we duplicate this one and then destroy it. Sounds strange, but that's how I implemented it. Works uh, other ways as well. You can reuse it, for example. And uh, you can set the transform parent as the current parent as well. And you get the component wing menu, you get the new submenu. Uh, as the parent of the submenu, you say, okay, this is my parent. And um, yeah, so you have always a complete menu. You could implement something like a go back, which you um, can't if you reuse the current object. So we do not destroy the parent object, we just um, set it inactive. Uh, but we will destroy all the current children because we will create new children. So, uh, and this creation of the children is of course here in the start method, so we do not have to implement it here. And the start method is called after a game object is instantiated. As the data, we will set the next wing as data and we will add a callback. So, where does this callback come from? Let's go up. It's an action of string. So uh, you can define an action in your ring, me ring menu that is called. Um, this uh, will just pass through to all the other rings. And if we are at the end of the menu, we will uh, check if the callback is not null and then we invoke it with a path. What's the path? Uh, it's something we uh, just set to the sub ring as well and we will enhance it with every click. As soon as you click, we will take the current path, with, which is zero at the beginning or just empty, add a slash and add the element active name. And so for the example, we will have a path like slash break um, four times four or three times three and then red and then anything uh, you want. So sub menu, sub menu, sub menu. Okay, and the last one will get the complete path and can do whatever he wants with it. Okay, back to the controller where we instantiate the menu. We will add the callback menu click. Menu click is not there, but we can use intelligence, uh, IntelliSense to create this method. There we go, here is a method, it expects a string. And what we could do is just debug log the path so that we can see which path the user take. And the path is the thing we um, get from outside. Then we split it up again. And then we call a place brick set prefab path one and two. Since it's, it starts with this one, we would expect something like uh, zero and one, which is brick zero color one. And here is this is empty. So uh, as an index, this is zero. This is index one. This is index two. All are integers. So we will path them and um, yeah, give this to place brick. And that's the reason why we choose as a name 0 and 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4 for the colors because they will be included in the path and then we can just pass it back to integers. Okay, that brick prefab, this is the only thing that's left. Uh, so we created the script place brick in the last tutorial and therefore uh, we have a brick ID and we have a material and we set the uh, prefab brick to the 
brick ID out of the brick library and the material ID we use it to look up the white material in the material library and set the brick mat. So the library is not there yet so let's create it. It's a complicated name but basically what we are doing is just add two uh, different arrays of bricks and materials. Back in the editor at our character we have these uh, libraries so we have two bricks and four colors and then we add it uh, in the slot. So we can't uh, choose this color because now these are only elements and models and now we need real things and real things are here. For example, a prefab brick uh, and I have also a two by two brick prepared and the materials are here and uh, yeah, just place them here. They should have the same order as you gave them, for example, blue, red, green, yellow. If we go back to our model here, blue, red is one, green, two, and yellow, it's not there. But you can uh, simply enhance it by saying color yellow, give it a new number. Oh wait, this was a wing, so let's delete this one. Color yellow is a copy of uh, color. Give it an icon, the yellow one. No wing is um, set after this one and it is in the coloring. The coloring has now four elements added here and there you go. Okay, back in menu cl click, we have everything we want. We have the part, we have split the path into three components, takes the first one or the second one with this index one and the first one with index uh, or the third one with index two and then we set the uh, mode back to build because we are not in the menu right now so that's it for this tutorial um, we can choose our brick so i have the four by two by two brick added in the repository and maybe a green one and then we can play that wherever we want yeah, I added some other things in the controller. You can have a look at it. The link to the repository is down in the description. But basically what I'm doing is I can't run if I'm in the menu. That makes basically uh, sense. Okay, so let's build something. There we go, a perfect IKEA logo. Of course, everybody knows the IKEA logo. So that's the logo. Everybody knows that. Um, yeah, I'm out. Build whatever you want with plenty of colors. Uh, I added some more colors, black and black. And yeah, black is good. So let's place black stones everywhere, rotate them. And yeah, that's it. I'm over, I'm out, have fun and Subscribe to my channel to get more straight to the point tutorials.